Okay, next morning with this 59-ish Viberlux, and I've got the hot going to the fuse and to the innermost connector on the fuse holder, and from there to the power switch, and from there to the one of the primaries. The other primary is soldered directly uh, with a professional splice to the neutral coming in from the wall, and that is heat shrinked and tucked away with everything else, and then the ground is longer than the hot and neutral. And I've said this in many videos, but I'll say it again. The reason for that is so that if the power cord were to pull out of um, the uh, cabinet, the ground would be the last one to possibly break. That way, say that you don't do it that way and the ground breaks first, and then the hot breaks first and the hot touches the chassis. Well, the chassis would not be grounded at that point. The chassis would go live, which means that you'd have uh, 120 volts AC on your guitar strings if you're playing the amp at the time, or just on the chassis if you were to touch it. This way, if the hot breaks free, because it's the shortest of the three connect, uh, conductors on the power cable, and it touches the chassis, well, the chassis is grounded. This hasn't broken yet, so it'll just short out. It'll trip a circuit breaker, but uh, you won't be electrocuted. That's nice. Uh, so I've got a new 3-watt 70 ohm uh, wire wound here and then a new uh, new old stock 22k here um, I've not done the biasing yet I'm going to power it up with tubes and measure where the bias is now uh, to see um, how close or far from the desired bias range we are then I'll choose which bias circuit to use the owner provided let me pull this out This little Spectral 50K uh, multi-turn pot. And while it's a fine pot, first of all, I don't want a 50K pot. 50K is way too much bias range, especially with a uh, continuous turn like this. You would have to turn and turn and turn and turn and turn. Um, second of all, there's not a great way to support this kind of thing on an eyelet board. Uh, so I will return this uh, with the, the rest of the parts. It's a fine, fine part. It's just not the right part for this application. I have many, many parts. Um, in general, I don't need to have parts provided by, uh, in, by the owners. In this bag are some other uh, Jupiters that he provided in case I need to replace these Astrons, and that's fine. And some little uh, generic 25 microfarad, 25 volt caps for coupling caps. I would use these if there was nothing else to use, but I have these Vichets in stock, which are a much better quality capacitor. And uh, you can't find these Vichets at places that sell parts for guitar amps. You know, I, I have vendors beyond what most people uh, who do this at a, a hobby level are aware of. And that's not to brag. I mean, I've been doing this for 30 years. I should, I should, have a, a wide list of vendors and, and stuff, and I do, uh, but I don't go to a place that sells, quote, guitar amp parts automatically for everything. Let me show you the next issue um, that's uh, a bit problematic in this amp. All right, here is one of the tube sockets. This is the first preempt tube socket. And I, I tightened up these little cups a bit, but the cups themselves have a lot of wiggle within the tube base. These pins are just not very tight, even though they are compressed themselves and will make good contact with the pins of the tube. There's just going to be a lot of wiggle with these. Um, I need to remove these tube sockets so that I can re uh, replace the rubber grommets if I'm doing a full restoration. The issue being here that they have this ground wire going to chassis which is soldered both to the, so uh, the tube socket itself and to this screw. Uh, on many fenders that I've had in the past, uh, the solder joint has just been made to the side of the tube socket, not to the screw. So I'm about to find out if I can actually desolder that well enough to be able to remove that screw. All right, while I was waiting for the soldering iron to heat up, I, uh, dipped paper towel and some isopropyl to get some of the dirt off the chassis in this area. 
and end up making a horrible, horrible smudge. Um, so this is what it can look like once it's really clean, but I've got a whole bunch more old particulate matter to get off before that's the case, just because it just you know, it comes off orange and then leaves behind the smears. Uh, I think I'm going to wait and see what's happening with the tube sockets. If they get replaced, then I'll have a much uh, flatter surface to cl really clean. But right now we're going to try to desolder this. And if I, spail, if I fail spectacularly, I'll be doing it live on camera. So won't that be fun? Let's see if it just heats up first. Okay, that's not so bad. Now I got it on that screw and it's on the tube socket. So let me see if I can wick some of that away so they're not uh, mating to each other, which is a inappropriate thing to do on this channel. I think that might have done it. All right. Let me go get some nail polish remover. Well, I said nail polish remover out of old habit. I uh, used to go to the hall closet and borrow my wife's stash of nail polish remover. But then she went and switched to the non-acetone kind, which does no good at all. And I went to the hardware store and bought a big old thing of pure acetone, which I keep in the basement. And here I'm going to apply some to this old paint using a Q-tip. Let me move that heater wire out of the way. All right, let's see if that's sufficient or whether I need to do anything heroic. Start with this one. This is also the kind of thing that drives me nuts when I do a typed up service record slash invoice for these things. Because I can write, removed old nuts, replaced or reinstalled. And even if I say, removed old paint so that I could remove old nuts, it takes, you know, two seconds to read. It doesn't really give an indication of the time. It's one of the reasons I started doing the, uh, the videos. They started off as, as uh, very thorough photo, you know, pictorials for viewers to, uh, for, for the owners of apps to see the pictures of the whole process. And I'd have little text explanations beneath the pictures. And then as the price of video came down, it was actually faster for me to start doing videos and uh, just, you know, talking rather than typing what I was doing and why. And here we are. But it all, all really stemmed from that first thing of, I can tell an owner what I did, but it's much better to show them. Almost there. I think the nut's free and it's just sticking in the old rubber grommet. All right, success. Now, if all we end up doing is changing these rubber grommets, I don't need to desolder anything from these pins. I just need to have this loose enough that I can turn it a little bit in the chassis and get these old rubber grommets out.
All right, time to put the new grommets in. I'll do this one first because it's easier one to reach. It's just a matter of forcing it down in that hole and cussing a bit. My internal dialogue is obscene. Make sure it's good on the other side. All right. After the third bath, everything's good. So it's time to put the screws back. Now, as I mentioned, getting these number six screws through the inner diameter of the uh, grommets is a bit tricky because it's a little bit too tight. So just kind of cross your fingers and get it started somehow. And I'll make sure that I'm not deforming the grommet, pulling it in on either side. Again, there's a case for doing things like this by hand. And just get that so it's all the way in on both sides. Let me do a visual inspection. Okay, the grommets aren't going anywhere. I'm lifting up on either side. So. Get this nut started. And uh, what is the right amount of compression? Well, that's where it gets a little bit tricky. You just kind of use some judgment in that you don't want the rubber grommets to be too compressed. But neither do you want them to have no tension on them whatsoever. You want them to have a little bit of compression. So what I want to do is I'm looking at it. All right, just now starting to compress. I think that's the right amount. So it's about that thick. A little bit more on this one. And I don't know if you can see on the camera, the old ones are more compressed, but then again, that, that rubber has moved over the years. That feels good. And that's before I even put uh, anything to really secure these nuts from the other side. Speaking of putting things on, on these other nuts on the other side, after I resolder that, I'm gonna put some uh, red nail polish here. Now I've had a lot of 50s fenders come in and I have seen black, I have seen red, and I have set, seen this green that this one has. Uh, but I uh, only have a limited stash of nail polish. And I've got a red that looks quite lovely in amps such as this that my wife never cared for, so it became mine. If you want to go out and find a, a mint green nail polish, go for it. If you want to go for the black, get you a, a goth tweed, that is fine. You do you. I'm not trying to lie that this amp is all original. I'm trying to show that it was serviced with the proper attention to detail. Proper, in my case, being more about the performance and sound than about a slavish uh, copying of pure originality, such as the color of paint. All right, so someone asked about these sockets that Fender used. They only used them in the Tweed era. Uh, when they moved to the brown panels, they stopped using the isolated uh, sockets. And it's not really necessary, but someone said, doesn't that mean that they don't ground very well? And they don't. Um, uh, which is why they have these added ground wires from the socket uh, shield and the hardware to chassis. Um, 
I have found that for whatever reason, no uh, tube sockets on the market today, at least in a Novel, a nine pin, except solder. I have tried, I have taken Belton's, I've taken just about everything I, out there, and I have uh, removed plating, and I have used the big chassis iron that, you know, really gets hot, and I just cannot make a solder joint to current production uh, tube socket bases. So, when it comes to an app from this era, if I cannot solder to it, I will actually uh, do a little trick on the other side where necessary, where on top of this washer, I would then have a toothed ground lug with another washer on top, and that top washer would typically be a, 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 a nylock, which means that the screw, which is contacting the metal here, would be tied to a ground lug, and then I will do a ground connection from the inside. I don't do that very often, typically only on an EF86 tube where that little bit of isolation from vibration can really help. Um, in an amp like this, if I wasn't trying to preserve the originality, I would just replace with uh, new Beltons and be done with it because the chassis isolation isn't really necessary for the good performance of the app. And I will talk to the owner after he sees this video to see if he wants me to do all the others just this way and live with slightly loose tubes and have everything vintage or whether that's a lot of time uh, he'd rather have everything rock solid, put in some new Beltons, um, abandon the isolation, at which point we would do a true 3.3 uh, volt on each side heater supply with no ground reference, and we'd put in some screen grid resistors. But in case he wants to go forward with this, now that I've got that soldered, I'm going to very carefully apply uh, the red nail polish to this one and this one, which just keeps the... Uh, nut from uh, vibrating loose and once that has dried i'll put these tube uh, these wires back in place we'll put tubes in and we'll see how it's sounding after the uh, filter caps change and all the new grounds and the ever so important v1 tube socket being changed out sorry about that my feet's too big Let me get the excess off. As mom taught me in the kitchen, you can always add more. You can't take away. Now, strictly speaking, you can take away nail polish, but then I have to go in there with acetone and do the whole thing over again. Just making sure that the threads have it in it, and where the threads contact the base of the nut, it's there. And I don't care about doing the entire thing. I do care about having enough connection through this acrylic once it sets up, that that screw won't vibrate loose. And I don't want it to spill down over the, uh, over the grommet. So I think that will be good once, sorry, once this sets up. So I'm gonna give this, oh, 15 minutes or so. And then I'll put the wires back in place and we'll put some, uh, some tubes in here and we'll see what it sounds like. 